journey as the night elf hunter, Jasara. This is the second video in that series. If you didn't see the first one, that's okay. I don't think we'll be too lost here, but you're more than welcome to go and check it out. And I mentioned this in the last video, but it was nearly 40 minutes into it, so just want to mention this at the beginning been causing some confusion of people thinking that I'm uploading the same video twice, and I kind of am, but I upload one version that has game audio, and then I upload another version without game audio, because I know people have different preferences when it comes to ASMR, and it's really not that hard for me to just take the game audio out when I'm editing. So, if you look at the top right hand corner of my videos, it will say game audio on or off. So you can tell which video you're watching. The description also has a, a sound emoji for whether the video, the audio is on or off for the game. And if you look in the description of the audio, uh, the description of the video, I have a link to the corresponding video that either has sound or not. So if you're currently watching the version with the sound and you would prefer to remove the sound and not hear these annoying little creatures making weird sounds, if you go down to the description, you will see a link to a version, uh, to the version without game audio, and vice versa. If you're watching the version without game audio, and you want to hear these weird little goblin sounds, feel free to switch over. But yeah, I don't know if I'm going to start saying this at the beginning of every video, but I should probably get the information out there since does not seem to be very clear. But yeah, now that we've got all the, the boring house cleaning stuff out of the way, we are continuing this journey. And the first quest that we have is to collect eight fell moss from these woodland protectors that have begun invading Shadow Glen in our purples or something. They're making some of the residents of this forest that were originally peaceful more violent. So one of these centaur creatures, this Tarndrilla, has tasked me to find eight of this fell moss um, to try to get to the bottom of what's going on. And in these videos, I'm going to take the time to actually read the quest, quest dialogue, so I have a little bit of context behind why I'm just going around and murdering random, random creatures. Since a lot of this game does kind of just boil down to run here, kill a bunch of these things, and then bring them back. I also want to see, as far as my bags, is it possible? I was hoping it would show, like how it shows how many um, arrows are there. It'd be nice if it showed how many empty spots I had in my bag, and I thought... I thought that was an option, but maybe it's not. Um. Yeah, it seems like it might not be an option.
stop rumbling this morning. My parents are just always against the idea of subscriptions and stuff in general growing up, so the idea of playing a game that costs $15 a month was completely out of the question. And yeah, plus we had dial-up internet. DSL, which, oh, did I not pick up the quest from her? Crap. Um, yeah, so I don't think our internet would have been able to handle World of Warcraft. Well, maybe, maybe people played it on dial-up, but I'm sure, okay, she didn't have another quest to give. That's not good. So typically when I record these videos, oh no, no, I'm messing up all my recording settings, sorry. Hold for technical difficulties. Um, yeah, one second, there's gonna probably be a weird cut here. I'll be back before you even know it. Sorry, like I was saying, um, yeah, typically when I'm recording these videos, I have a button I can press that makes like a, a loud, quick sound on a separate audio channel. So when I'm editing, I can see all the spots I need to go back and check to cut out cars and stomach rumbles and things like that, but OBS tends to be a little glitchy and the button stops working occasionally so I had to stop the video and restart OBS. Oh crap, I need to go back and buy stuff from my trainer. Uh, so yeah, I just went and did that but I'll edit it together so there shouldn't be any... Oh my god. And there shouldn't be any disruption for you. Wow, my stomach sounds like a creaky old ship this morning. As you can see, it's 9.38 in the morning, and I'm drinking tea on an empty stomach, which is not the brightest idea for an ASMR video, apparently, because it's making my stomach grumble a lot. Also, I guess it's a little disrespectful that I just ran over all those graves. Okay, is this the guy I'm supposed to talk to? someone different. I came to Shadow Glen to observe the webwood spiders that dwell in the Shadow Thread Cave. They are cousins to a much smaller variety of spider. I believe the world tree has had a profound effect on them. I'd like specimens to study. To confirm this, first I'd like some of their venom gather webwood venom sacks from the spiders in and around the Shadow Thread Cave to the north. I can then examine them for similarities with their smaller cousin's venom. Nice, and I'll get a really good, well not a really good, but a dagger that's twice as good as mine. Once I complete that. Glad I picked that up before I went over there and killed a bunch of spiders anyway. saying because I went on so many tangents talking about playing World of Warcraft at my grandparents, talking about my internet, talking about my stomach being noisy and the editing I have to do. But yeah, I guess the original thing I was talking about is my parents would not allow me to get a World of Warcraft subscription as a kid. And our internet probably couldn't have handled it anyway. Oh wow, this is going to take up most of my money. Only one 
Interesting. Perhaptor can be active on any one target. So yeah, the point of me saying what that was, getting to play World of Warcraft at my... at my grandfather's was quite the treat. brings back brings back memories of that as a child which were, was really fun because yeah World of Warcraft is really fun when you're a kid it was even more fun in 2004 because there were way less distractions and cool games and stuff like that so this was pretty groundbreaking and then the fact that I only had to play it relatively rarely when I was at my grandparents spending the night. It made it pretty special. And I remember just sitting and watching my grandfather play a lot, which was just as fun. Especially because, as you could guess, my characters were pretty low level. Since I didn't get to play them very often, and I didn't really know what I was doing when I did get to play them, so watching my grandfather play high level characters was very fun, especially since he knew what he was doing. Um, but I remember, I think I played a Torrin Hunter, is what I remember playing most as a kid. And I really liked the Torrin starting area, like the wide open plains, and just kind of their Native American culture. Native American. I don't really look at that much, I guess. In the summer, if I actually go outside, which I used to do as a kid, since I grew up working on my family's vegetable farm and stuff like that, but in more recent years, basically since graduating high school, I haven't really worked outside much, and I rarely get much of a tan since I'm a very indoor person now, probably too much. Yeah, so I do have some Indian heritage, enough where I was able to go to a college in my home state, tuition free, which was very nice. Um, but yeah, so I always like the Torn because of that. Okay, are these the spiders I need to kill? usually shows up every day at the same time. He hasn't shown up yet, and she says he freak he spends a lot of time hanging around this cave, so she wants me to check it out to make sure he's
is okay. And I just don't understand why would anyone spend a lot of time hanging around this cave. That does not seem like a smart or good use of time. funny how popular World of Warcraft Classic has become as of late. Um, yeah, it's just funny that in 2023, instead of playing the newest, supposedly most improved version of World of Warcraft, that Blizzard has put so much time into developing, people rather play a much simpler game that came out nearly 20 years ago. Oh no, is my bag full of that shit? Okay, I better find this guy soon. But, I don't know, I can feel myself becoming older. Uh, I'm 28. Unfortunately soon to be 29 in a couple months. been like very cutting edge, early adopter, love tech and stuff, but as I get older and older, I think I'm getting that natural human incl inclination to, I don't know, be afraid of new things and think that technology is progressing too fast, especially with all this AI stuff, which I've been very... I don't know, I've been excited about it for years now and kind of knew it was coming and and now that it's actually here I'm getting more worried and kind of scared by the day I don't really see how it's going to work out okay Oh shit I went the wrong way How does this work?
I just don't know how all these AI tools are gonna fit them into into our lives without them. I don't, I don't know, making things even more dystopian. I do have a semi-naive belief that things do just kind of tend to work out and things rarely happen the way that we expect them to. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that somehow, oh, there are a lot of bones in here. Do I just like run around and try to find this guy? Don't I have like a ability that makes it so I disappear? Where is that? It's like a racial ability. Reducing the chance of enemy detecting your presence lasts until cancel or upon moving. Okay. Um, I'm hoping it just works out and makes our lives better. But.
and I can arrange for that unhatched spider to be contained. There must be a, desk, a nest deep in the shadow thread cave. Please search for an egg in the nest and return it to me. I'll get a slightly better tunic. Just like this world tree in this game, these large advancements and big decisions made by a small group of people could lead to dire consequences for a lot of other people that had no choice in the matter, and that's mostly what I'm worried about. And, I don't know, it's really hard to hold back progress, and I've come to the kind of sad, bleak realization that a lot of times you kind of just need to get on board or the train leaves, or even worse, runs over you. So, I don't know if that's a bad outlook on life, but even if you don't support something, you move. sometimes you kind of just need to embrace it and try to figure out how you can make the most of it, or try to influence it in a, even some small way in a direction you think might be best. That's kind of how I feel with AI. I've been experimenting with the tools because I do think they have a lot of potential, so I don't want to be completely ignorant about them. But even me being a relatively techie, early adopter, cutting-edge person, am overwhelmed by number of tools already out there and how quickly they're advancing. And this is definitely a ramble because I have no idea where I'm going with this. But yeah, if anyone, if you listening to this, has a similar feeling about AI and concerns like that, I would love to hear them in the comments or even some, like if you're like, yeah, I feel a similar way. Or maybe you have some really positive opinions of AI or a, pl a bright outlook on how you think this is going to turn out. Um, I would love to hear that as well because I am very, very frequently wrong about my predictions about the world. I think when you predict something, you make the chance of events occurring like that way less likely. I think things almost never work out how they're predicted. Um, so yeah, I just love to hear how other people feel about this AI stuff, because not many people in my real life are, are first in it, so it's mostly me just telling them about it, and not, they don't really, they haven't really formed opinions about it. I'm kind of worried about how the world's going to look in a couple of years from AI things. I've already found some tools and I've tried to start automating some of my job with them, uh, at least with my ability of using the tools. They don't seem to be quite there yet, but I'm pretty sure that easily within five years my job will be able to be automated, which scares me. And I'm sure there's a lot of other jobs out there that um, will also be able to be automated. And I don't know what happens when, when it becomes easier and cheaper to have an AI do my job and probably do it a lot better. Because as far as I know, AIs don't have bad days. AIs, hopefully, don't have secondary objectives that they rather focus on than their job. Whereas I see my job as a way to make money while I work on things I'm actually passionate about, like music and this ASMR channel. And AI is going to dedicate all its resources and capabilities towards handling the task at hand. I'm just worried about all like the fake information and I don't know. Yeah, there's just a lot of ways it's gonna be really hard to know if any video or especially picture or audio recording is real. Kinda worried about like books going back and being able to be, be re 
websites are just, yeah, I think history is going to be a lot easier to rewrite, which is kind of why I've started um, buying real physical books, even though I mostly read on my Kindle. I just like to have paper versions of books that I think are important, because I think they'll be a lot harder to tamper with. I say that because, I don't know, in my weird paranoid brain, I'm like, wouldn't surprise me if we have like AI-powered nanobots within my lifetime that could be deployed into my apartment and like erase the ink on the page and rewrite it perfectly. Again, I hope that's not a possibility, but I don't know. I don't think anything's out of the question in my lifetime with how, how quickly things have developed in the past 28 years. Also, I just get like a hankering, not even a hankering, but just a fear of the internet being erased or taken down in general. So I try to, I'm trying to collect some physical copies of art and different things I think are valuable, all possible, in case that ever happens. Which, to transition to another related but crazy ramble, is just thinking about what would the world look like if the internet did just disappear all of a sudden. Because it's not even electricity, even though I don't know if the, I feel like the power grid would not work if the internet went down. But it's just crazy, something that didn't even exist 40 years ago and isn't on paper necessary to support life if it disappeared. I don't know what the world would look like because our infrastructure and just daily lives rely on it so much. Like I work in a completely remote company. So I only see my coworkers like once or maybe twice a year when we do off sites and all get together somewhere. So if the internet went away, I would probably never interact with those people again. And yeah, just how would banking work and just basic utilities. I'm terrible with directions, so I would have no I mean, maybe I'd be able to figure it out with road signs and stuff, but I highly doubt it. I'd have no idea how to even just drive a few states away to get back to my parents' house from where I live now. I don't know. I just like to pose these random, semi-scary thought experiments to myself. So, sorry if I realize this video is supposed to be relaxing, so it's probably not the best the best thing to be rambling about while you're trying to potentially go to sleep. I guess on a brighter note, let's get back to the game. I'm assuming probably if I, oh, okay, there's, I think that's going to be where the egg is that I need. And hopefully we will find, oh my god, it's already full. That sucks that things only pile up. Five high, and then I'm gonna need to drop something to get the egg. Okay, I guess I'll just leave that. I need to get another bag. I shouldn't have shot that again. That was stupid. I did not. I did not execute that perfectly. Real life 
good news. I went to a acoustic music jam a couple days ago, which I've been wanting to go to one for a long time. And it was really nice. I already started to meet a couple musicians and they told me about some other jams which will hopefully turn into just like a a positive feedback loop of starting to meet more people in the New York City kind of folk bluegrass community. Um, so yeah, and then it ended up after after that jam there was a music there's like a benefit concert since it was it would have been Loretta Lynn who was a famous female country singer um, it would have been her 91st birthday on Friday two days ago and I went so there was a benefit concert of people doing some Loretta Lynn and then other similar music nice little surprise that my girlfriend and I stayed for, and it was to benef benefit this organization called Apple Shop, which I had never heard of before, but it is like a, um, they're dedicated to preserving the culture of Appalachian, I guess, I was going to say society, but Appalachian culture. They're dedicated preserving Appalachian culture, so they have a bunch of field recordings and things like that of, like, banjo, Appalachian, um, mountain banjo music, and just, like, coal mining culture and things like that. Oh, nice, we have some friends. This should make it easier to get out. And, yeah, so I guess last July, this Apple shot, it's like a shop. Um, they were affected by a really bad flood. I think it was around like July 28th last year. And a lot of their archives got damaged. And their radio station that they have was completely destroyed. And this was just a benefit that um, helped raise money for them to start to rebuild and repair the damage done to their archives. And yeah, it's just for a good cause, so I donated some money. And there are some really good performers. Shit. And yeah, so it was a really good day. Got to play music with. Sure, I 
I've been seriously poisoned. You must help me. Please tell Trinia Silver Shrine she'll be able to help me. Hurry, I'm so dizzy. So I'm sure I have to run back, and then she'll say, go kill that spider to get its venom to make a thing for the whatever, so-and-so. So I'm sure I'll be back here momentarily. But anyway, when I was back in, uh, back home visiting a friend, they mentioned that one of their friends, who I've, I've met maybe a handful of times at different gatherings, is also living in New York City. And my friend back home must have reached out to that other guy because he messaged me and uh, invited me to a cookout at his apartment. So my girlfriend and I are going to that cookout tonight, so it'll be nice to meet some some new people in New York that are from my home state and grew up around where I grew up. So it's been a pretty, pretty eventful, busy weekend, which is nice for a change, but I don't know, I'm very, I really like meeting new people and I really want to get involved with the music community here and meet people since that's one of the, the biggest benefits of being in New York is the amount of people around, so I really should take the most of it. But I'm also a huge homebody. I like to just kind of stick around my apartment and work on my project of learning music and making these ASMR videos. So, yeah. Not a double-edged sword, but balance to strike in this. This weekend is definitely more on the balance of getting out and actually doing stuff, which I guess I could probably use since I do stay home a lot of the time on the weekends. Okay. I really hope that I can actually turn this rune belt into some type of leather eventually, and I haven't just been carrying all this around for no reason. like this video has been very rambly, so I hope you're in the mood for me just going off on a bunch of random tangents and losing my train of thought a lot. If not, I apologize that that is what you have received in this video, but I do think a lot of people enjoy rambles, so I hope you're one of them. And then after I finish recording this, I need to edit my two Grand Theft Auto Online videos in this and my other World of Warcraft classic video that I've recorded. Okay, let's see. Ah, uh, Jasara, I was hoping you'd be prompt in answering my summons. I have an important task that I would like you to perform. It is time for you to uh, set out to seek your destiny, Jasara, but before you are ready to set out into the world beyond our enchanted forest, there is much you must learn about our recent history. Much has changed with our people since the Battle of Mount Hyshal, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Lord Drissel lies a pale shadow of what it once was. Its power used to defeat Archimonde. Ar 
Archimond and drive back the Burning Legion. There is a task you must perform. Go to the moon well north of Aldrisal and return me a vial of its water. Okay, I think that's the well that I've run by like ten times now. Not a huge fan of all these quests. Putting new things in my inventory and making it even more limited. to try to go 
soon.